so I have a confession. Um, a, a few years ago, I actually, <sighs> this is difficult. I, I, uh, I went and, uh, stood in line and I bought a game at, um, you know, I don't even, <laughs> they who shall not be named. <laughs> I don't even know how to say this. It, it's, it's, I think I feel myself actually getting misty eyed here. Like this is a, 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 a harsh confession. I went and stood online and I bought a game at at GameStop. Yeah. It's and kind of sometimes look, it's it's sometimes a necessary evil. Like sometimes there's just, you know, a game's too mature for Target or Walmart to carry, you know, and they're not going to carry it or whatever, and then like, you know, you can either order it online and wait for it or you can go to a night of releasing and just go and pick it up. And then that kind of happened with me with a couple of things, but I'll get you know I'll get into that in a little bit later. But like I've purchased some stuff from GameStop at a midnight release where it's like we've got plenty of them, but like I want it now. But like sometimes that happens, <laughs> so it's not it's not it's not a shameful thing, you it, know. It felt shame, and I'll I'll tell you why. It, it was this: it was Red Dead Redemption Two, and it was the Ultimate Edition, which had everything. Like I didn't want to get the Collector's Edition. Because I've been burned on Rockstar collector, Collector's Editions before. But I did, like, I was very excited for this game. And the only people that carried at the at release, the Ultimate yeah. Edition, it was GameStop. They got their, their exclusive little grubby paws on that shit. Yeah. And the whole time that I was online at that spot, even though one of the people that worked there is, I'm cool with them and everything. What do you think I was thinking, though? The entire time... Fuck GameStop. That's exactly right. <laughs> Fuck so, GameStop. Yeah. So when I was so let's not dwell on my sin here. So I made my confession. But when I the when I was playing Red Dead Two, there was a t- the moment that I said, you know what, this game. Also, also really is a quick thing. Like a Walmart or a Target is rarely going to carry a, a enhanced, a deluxe, or a collector's edition of anything. Yeah, that that is a hundred percent true. So. Um, Best Buy will, but it's also not like they're not going to have like the ultimate or like, you know, it's it's usually sold out. Yeah. Which which kind of stinks. But um, when I was playing Red Dead, there was one of the collection missions um, and I really tried to RPG the, the hell out of this game. And so I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I go up to this dude and he instantly gets on his horse and hauls ass gone and you know, Red Dead is one of those one of those games that I call a squirrel game, meaning like you're on your way to do something, and yeah. on the way to do that thing, like five hundred things happen, and you know, yeah, and you and forget you get... what it was that you were gonna do. Well, that's that's your Fallout, your <laughs> yeah. your Elder Scrolls games. Those are all of those types of games where it's like you're on a mission to save the world from a dragon, and like oh, but this guy needs help reading poetry to his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so. And so. So what um, what happened was I got mad because I was on my way to do something else. Like, I think I was on my way to sell some jewelry that I stole somewhere. I don't know. But I was mad that this dude made me go out of my way to go get the money that he owed my gang. Yeah. So I tied him up and I put him on some railroad tracks, which is the natural thing that you do. <laughs> That's not sadistic at all. And <laughs> I made camp. And I'm sitting there like, I'm going to have dinner while I wait for the train to run this dude over. Uh-huh. And so... What ends up happening is I um, didn't have anything to cook. And I'm like, ah, you know what? I looked off in the distance. It was like two football fields away, give or take, mm-hmm. in video game like distance. depth perception yeah. thing. In a, in a video game where everyone is always running wherever they go. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, so, there's no gen- gentle walking. Like and you and just not push, you um, push forward and they just run. And, and it for hours. <laughs> and and never, like, they don't run out of breath or nothing. Yeah. It's just There's no heavy breathing. Gone. Yeah. Um, but there were some deer. And so I pull out a, the bow and arrow and I take a shot and I got, for all you... uh uh gamers out there you'll know like got the red hit marker which means yeah one shot one kill got it so then get on my horse and i'm like and i actually turned around as if to say to the guy on the train track <laughs> you wait right there i'll be right back so, <laughs> don't, so, go, don't go anywhere. don't go anywhere <laughs> and he's still squirming tied up on the track and so i'm i'm dipping out i'm gonna go get and on the way there i hear this sound like like I'm not even going to reproduce it. It's horrifying. It's the sound that a deer makes when it's like trying to get up, like screaming. And I'm like, 
Oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> I did I miss? Like what? Ha- I got the red hit marker. I thought it was a clean shot. Yeah. So the game gives you the opportunity to like like put the thing out of his like go ahead. Finish it. Finish it off. Yeah. You're I mean, this is a survival thing now. Yeah. Like you're, so you're hunting and And then you skin it and blah blah blah. But at that moment I was like, the feeling that I had in the pit of my stomach, I was like, yo, this fucking game is goddamn special. There's something there's something up with this game. Like Yeah. This is special. Um, have you ever had that happen? Well, yeah, I've had I, I mean, I've had that happen on a number of games throughout my career. Um the most recent one, because I haven't had the kind of experience that I've had with it since then. Like I've had some games where I'm like, whoa, this is really cool, like or whatever, but like was was Breath of the Wild. Um and that that was because like I've I'm used to Zelda games and usually a lot of their formula and I've played through everything that wasn't on a on a Game Boy. You know, if mm-hmm. it was if it was a portable game, I hadn't um I hadn't played it except for now that they released Link's Awakening. I played that now, but that's a remaster too. So, but, um, but I played Breath of the Wild, and when you get the opening to whatever is going on, it starts off very quiet, and then you're, you know, in your underwear, <laughs> and you get released from this like what is a futuristic looking, you know, cave of some sort. And you go out into the world and you just kind of see everything around you. And it's just kind of like, hey, this is your world now. Go and enjoy go it. Go do things. Go do things. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so whatever. So you kind of start going around and picking stuff up. And they don't really tell you what to do with anything or whatever. And you come across the old man. And he's like, hey, you know, here's some, you know, there's my baked apple. And like, you should try it too. Grab an apple and bake it over here. And I'm like, you just put something next to fire. And it'll either catch fire or cook. And like, and I was like, this is like, and that was in like the first eight minutes, maybe yeah. like less than, less than that. Um, and I'm like, that's kind of crazy. And I'm like, I still don't have pants, but like, I'm intrigued by the fact that like I'm cooking an <laughs> apple next to fire and then like eating the apple gives me health. And like you go through and you start learning some of the other stuff of like oh you have weapon breakage and what you can hit and you know thing you can you can hide in grass and like you can have an enemy and you can the enemy can lose track of you if you kind of like go around a corner and go up a tree like they'll be like mm, where'd they go <laughs> and it was and a little question mark goes and over the, yeah head, a little like... question mark comes up over their head and they're looking around and then you know <laughs> after a little bit of searching then they'll give up and i was like this is this is crazy like I've never had a Zelda game do this, mm-hmm. let alone like much in the way of like other AAA titles. And as it just like the game continued to impress me just in going through and playing it. Like I wasn't trying to do anything fancy. I was just trying to learn how to play. But like everything it gave you, it's like, oh, hey, here's another tool. See what you can do with it. You yeah. know, figure. We haven't even figured out everything that that this does. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like the uh, the 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 gun in Avengers One. Like, I don't even know what this does, but just <laughs> throw it at stuff. Yeah. See what happens. Figure so, it out. Yeah. And, um, and I, I, I'm still kind of impressed because people are still playing it, and like I'll randomly get an Instagram that I'll come across where somebody, like you know, has like a metal boomerang and they throw it. And then they catch it with the magnetic ability that your, you know, mm-hmm. you know, medieval iPad has, and, and then like it catches in the spinning motion, and then you use it like an uh, a floating, <laughs> you know, mind controlled buzzsaw, and you just <laughs> ra- rakes through enemies and stuff. And I'm like, that is insanity. The thing, like, who would have thought to do that? Yeah. And the fact that like you know, in some of the older games, you know which we had something similar in our D&D episode uh, recently, but, you know, they have a specific way a puzzle needs to be completed. You know, mm-hmm. you need to light the the torch, you know, <laughs> by shooting <laughs> shooting the arrow through fire, and you know, and then it sets fire. If you can get fire to that thing in any other way, it'll work. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't need to f- solve a puzzle, like, a specific way. Like, you have a number of, you know, things that need to match up, and then it works. And then you're like, oh, okay, so... And it was, and that was blew my mind. I was like, yeah, there's something super special about this game. I'll I'll say this, and there's a reason that we want to go through this stuff, and that is this episode. And and welcome back to <laughs> season two. Uh, this is season two, episode one. 
of the end of a species podcast it's a new it's a new thing for us like we're we're planning stuff and uh we have, we're we're looking at maybe you know having some bullet points that we want to make sure we hit yeah in, in an episode we're, we're getting a so little we're, organized and stuff yeah so we're less like <laughs> just, distracted yeah throwing throwing shit against the wall but like this game so this is about the, this episode is about the last of us too uh, which recently released, and I have it. I only have it because I'm a contrarian, and a lot of people hated the game. And because a lot of people hated the game, I'm like, what? It looks pretty good. Like, the demos look pretty good. And the I, first one was pretty criti- critically acclaimed as well. I had never played the first one. Right, and yeah, so, you were telling me that, yeah. So, and I haven't. And I haven't I haven't either. And and the the first one is one that my brother had been begging me to play he's like you have to play this game and so i want to start with just going over my impression like i brute forced my way through the first one but i paid attention to as much as i could i absorbed as much of the main story as i could i did not go hunting for collectibles i did not go hunting for like um anything achievements achievements and not for nothing if you play through this entire game you will get two trophies that's it. That's it. You'll get the completion of whatever difficulty you had, and then there's some random thing that you may have done. But most of the trophies require like you to know what you're doing and do multiple. You're not going to get multiple trophies in one shot. But um, the story to Last of Us 1, the development, the, the world building, even though it's a very linear game, for the time that it came out, very, very good. Very, very good. Um. It's very walk reminiscent of Walking Dead, kind of how they lay okay. it out. Yeah, but um, the uh, the character development, the decisions that they put you in some of some of them are a little tropish. Like uh, you have your your siblings that the older sibling protects the younger sibling kind of thing, and yeah, you know um, the uh, cannibal. Uh, cult group yeah. that you have to kind of the group of survivors whatever. that make their way out of eating people because mm-hmm. food is scarce and they're like but people are plentiful still you know um so but the story itself and the message that the game gives you through that story is really good because you actually start saying to yourself would i make the same choice that joel made in this game i i'm trying not to get any spoilers i'm pretty sure most people that care have played this game but mm-hmm. in essence it's Joel and Ellie doing this adventure. Ellie's immune to this virus that has overtaken overtaken humanity and turned a whole bunch of people into in, what they call infected, but really they're zombies. Yeah. And so It's it's a it's like a mildew or a mold-based thing, right? Cuz it's, it's like It's a fungus. It's fungus. A, it's a fungus okay. that um kind of takes over their mind. And I think I saw some YouTube video where they said this specific fungus from this game it actually exists in the world and it like actually attacks ants and takes oh. over their nervous system and yeah that well that might be where they got it because yeah I'm, I'm aware of that too like i remember that that fungus that gets into them and it, yeah it like, ends up taking over like the spores get into them and then and then they just kind of sit there while they allow themselves to be devoured and you know that's yeah. insane but um so, but zombies but, that just stand there and let the fungus take over are no fun. They have to run screaming at you. And yeah, you have, to, mm-hmm. you have to blow their heads off and stuff. So. Exactly. Hence, video game. Which which segues into the gameplay. Now, the gameplay to this game is very, 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 very clunky. It is super clunky. Even for 2013, when the game came out, it is clunky. Um, I'm talking 2013. The only game that did better than this game was Grand Theft Auto V, as far as critical acclaim and etc. Was but that, was Grand Theft Auto Five that long ago? Yeah. Holy they shit! They just they just keep re-releasing <laughs> it and like they've they've released it on P, on the old gen PS3, Xbox 360, the new gen PC, and then they you know you have Grand Theft Auto Online, so you keep yeah. seeing it come Updated, up, updated, yeah, etc. Which reminds me, I have to log in so they can give me my million bucks. But um, <laughs> the game has very limited enemy types. You have your humans, and then you have like two or three t- three types of infected that's pretty much it uh-huh. um and then there's some 
a couple of boss fights strewn about. Uh, some of them are kind of clever, which is cool. Um, there are some puzzles that you have to do. Uh, they're very basic. Um, the gameplay itself is almost like it's trying to be somewhere between Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Okay. But it, it to me, it wasn't the gameplay itself was not fle- as fleshed out as the story was. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that ends up playing like is it playing like Silent Hill like Silent Hill or I'm sorry Resident Evil like over the shoulder kind of ish or is it like the it's kind of like <clears throat> it's not the fixed camera it is okay. the, the kind of the over the shoulder thing okay. but it also has the added mechanic of you have it's you and you have this NPC character in Ellie that also like. You can tell where God of War, like the new God of War, got a lot of its inspiration from. Like there are okay. there are platforms that are too high for you to climb up to. So, so you send Ellie. You lift boost her. Ellie up and she either helps you get up there or she drops down a ladder or, or whatever, right? Yeah. And so there there's that kind of stuff. Um but overall, I enjoyed my gameplay. It was uh, again, 7 years too late, so it's hard for me to say <laughs> It'd be like saying, I'm going to take vanilla Skyrim today, like yeah. the Skyrim that came out in 2011, and play it today and be like, oh, that's it. Um, yeah. Well, it, it's not really a fair comparison, but I mean, it's, it's still a great game. However, having said that, The Last of Us 2, I have not finished this game. I'm about, I'm going to say about 60, 70% of the way through. I am pretty mad. I'm pretty actually uh, hella pissed about the (laughs) amount of hate that this game is receiving. Do I think that this game is the best game that's come out in the last five years? No, no, but I'm, I'm really fucking tired of good games coming out and them getting the reception that a shitty game would get. Like if ET, the game was remade for next gen Uh and they changed. And this is why we can't fucking have nice things. Yeah. It's because you have a game out that, like, here's a game that's a single-player campaign, right? Right. The gameplay to this game is phenomenal. The story is pretty good, right? It it sets out it sets you out on an adventure. Um, I will say that I give a lot of games a built-in, uh, be like because comma reasons. Yeah. When, well, you, when they're post-apocalyptic, to, yeah. like yeah. If, if it's a post post-apocalyptic thing. Like you think of like, we we talked about this uh, off the episode. Like, but Michonne in in Walking yeah, Dead, Michonne, yeah, Michonne is a fucking uh, art what, director, art, art director, art dealer, whatever. Yeah, and art, when art we critic, something. and when we meet her, she's fucking leading two zombies around. Like they're <laughs> they're they're fucking like yeah, they got their jaws the, cut off. They got their they're arms her slaves. Cut off. Like hey, these these are the people that yeah, they do my bidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm chopping people up with, with a sword. sword. With a samurai sword. Yeah, with, of, of all things. And I don't say much. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so there's a built... And, and we accept that. And yeah. we're cool with it. And I know some people have critiqued it, but not to the point that they've critiqued this game. Yeah. Um, I have my own theories. I don't want to assume negative intent on anybody's part about why they specifically do not like this game. So... I'm not I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it at that. However, having said that, um this like this game is exactly what a sequel is supposed to be. There are games that were It's better so it's better than the original. I would I would say so and in in all the ways that matter. So like the okay. original is a is a linear adventure that has several weapons several non-weapon things that you can use to distract enemies and specific encounter types. Like there could be an encounter where you have humans. Yeah. There could be an encounter where you have infected, but it's very scripted. This game is the same, but it makes it better. So if am I going to put this game up against Red Dead 2? No. Am I going to put this game up against... Um, God of War, even maybe not. I don't know. It's possible, but well, you got to get that last thirty percent in. Yeah, yeah. But the the thing is that with with this game, 
it does everything that The Last of Us 1 did, and it does a little more of it. So it gives you these surprise um, moments where somebody you didn't expect to, something happens to somebody you didn't expect it to happen to. Yeah. And it's not in a way like in The Last of Us 1, when a character dies, there are very, like some of them are ones where you're like, I think something's about to happen to this person. But in this game, it's like, holy crap, did that just happen? Right? And so... You, well, you'd like a little surprise because, you know, you get, you know, you know, with an, as much media as consumed, especially in the last several months, like, you f- get and feel and know things. Like, I, I don't know if my wife finds it endearing or annoying, but, like, we'll watch an episode of something and I'll be like, this will happen over here. This person's going to do this and this person's going to do this and this is what's going to end up, up, up happening. And then when I'm right... Um, my wife she's, does that. She's when I'm right. She's like, "Wow, you've really predicted that." And I'm like, "Yeah, I I'm sorry if I ruined anything." <laughs> um, but I I do have a, a tendency to kind of like I've seen enough TV. I know how people write things. Yeah, you know, so it's not the most difficult. So if you can write something that's surprising or shocking, especially with having played through the first game and then coming to the second game and not just getting more of the exact same. Then yeah, then you're they're doing something right if you're being surprised by stuff. To to circle back, especially gameplay wise, um, there was a moment where I knew this game was special, and that was there was a uh, a specific scenario that I was in, and I saw a bunch of these people from this militia group called the um, the Washington Liberation Front, Wolf. And they're walking around. They don't know I'm there. And so I'm like, I'm going to stealth one of them. And I messed up. Like, I got up too quick, and they saw me, so I couldn't do the... They couldn't press the button to grab them. Yeah. And so that's when, like, shit hits the fan. Everybody knows you're there, and you're... Now Now it goes from Resident Evil to Siphon Filter. You're like, <laughs> I got to shoot everybody. Let's yeah. just go. Let's just go nuts. <laughs> and so I'm shooting people, and the last one, I, I'm out of bullets in my handgun pull out my shotgun and I just quick aim and panic fire. And I shoot the dude like close to the abdomen and the, in the, on the side and he falls down to one knee and drops his gun. Yeah. And he looks at me, puts one arm up. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty like a, a, maybe 10, 15 feet away from the guy. And he, he puts up his arm and goes, no, don't do that. If you're going to do it come in my face and do it up close. And I'm like, and I pause the game instantly. Like, I'm like, was he talking to me? (laughs) And I looked, I looked looked over my shoulder and I'm like, what the hell? So I'm like, all right, cool. And so I unpause the game. I walk up to the dude and the game actually tells you press this. And so Ellie pulls out (laughs) a weapon and crunch crunches the dude's head in. (laughs) And the person that's with her goes, what the fuck, Ellie? And I'm just like, yeah, the, the game is like literally talking to me. Like, you could have done nothing. Yeah. I don't know what would have happened if you would have walked away, but we're not conditioned for that in a video game. Yeah. So, no, so it's, the, yeah, the, it's double tap and then one yeah. in the head. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so the game, the game is literally like giving you like, it's it's almost um, like telling you off for like, hey, why did you do that? Like, yeah. you had him already. He's unarmed. Yeah. And you went up and, like, destroyed this dude. Yeah. So, that to me, like... So, well, what, let me ask this. Was there an option to walk away? Like, just bolt and be like, he shot him and, like, you ran and then that's it? Like, he may come back later as a You know what? A villain I'm gonna, or something? I'm, I may... I don't know that he'll come back. Yeah. Because the encounters, like, the game is very, it's scripted in such a way that yeah. it goes from point A to point B. So it's not like, it's not like a Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War where, like, the enemies that you leave behind come back. But I don't know. And in this gameplay, like, the, I've not, I'm not really great at stealth games. And it's not because I'm not good at them. It's just because I don't try for stealth. I try for, like leave no soul behind <laughs> no witnesses <laughs> like send them all to heaven like yeah. that that's the type of gameplay i have but it maybe i'll replay it and i'll i'll see if that happens and i'll just go like okay 
I'll leave that person there and keep yeah. it moving. I don't know what would happen. Maybe they'll pick up a gun and try to shoot me. I don't yeah. know. As soon as you turn their back, they picked up their weapon again and they're back on you. Yeah. Yeah, but the fact that the game scolded me for for doing that. Or like, I mean, you were still at a distance. You you had more ammunition. I'm assuming you could have shot him there and not yeah. given him the satisfaction of walking. Absolutely. Up or whatever. And so, like, having said that, and and to be honest, you really want to go up and do it up close because this is a survival game. So ammunition in this game it's is precious. Is, yeah, yeah, it's it's not everywhere. So um, with that said, games that can make you have that feeling when you're playing them and you you really do have to go in with good faith right and and allow yourself like i could go into any game and just think oh this is just pixels and then the illusion is broken yeah but if you allow yourself to like if you come in meet them halfway the really good games will immerse you enough where you actually start feeling those feelings and you're like holy crap yeah so in this game there's enough diversity in the gameplay compared to last of us one mm-hmm. that you almost want to play a scenario over and over again to see how many different ways you can get past it because really you're playing through the game to get to the next part of the story which is the that uncharted last of us formula that naughty dog does yeah um but having said that that is where the value is right like there's a reason that I laugh, I don't laugh, but I feel bad for like the Street Fighter V crowd that paid 60 bucks for Street Fighter, got like a handful of characters, and is still paying 30, 40, 50 bucks for add-ons to this day every time they put in (laughs) new characters. Yeah. You're probably $250 into this game, and now you have a full game now. Yeah. Whereas if you paid 60 bucks for Last of Us 2, you have an experience that you can have over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And the only extras I got for having the special edition were like Avatar. Like, it was I I didn't have to get the special edition. I right. only got it because of the steel book and because I'm old school and I like having steel books. Yeah. But if you got the sixty dollar version of this game, you got a full game that doesn't have bugs, and everybody's complaining about the fact that well, I wouldn't have made that decision. It doesn't make sense. And I don't get it. I really don't. Um, Like, the enemy... There's multiple types of enemies. So now they... uh, I remember... I wasn't a big Resident Evil head. Um, And you've you've introduced me to a lot of Resident Evil. And just before I went on this adventure, you introduced me to the liquor enemy type. (laughs) Which is a, a, a zombie that can't see... I'll, I'll, actually, I'll let you. I don't yeah, want to screw it up. The a liquor is uh, a, an advanced uh, zombie type that uh, it has. You know, it's more animalistic. Um, it, it can crawl, climb on walls. Has an elongated tongue that uses is a, kind of a spear, but it's lost its sight. So it, you know, works predominantly off of sound and and you know movement and and stuff like that. Um, and in the newest game iteration, like you can sneak by these things because they've amped them up to be considerably powerful and dangerous. Um, where you, if you want to, you can conserve ammunition because they're going to take a lot of shotgun rounds or grenade launcher rounds or whatever to take them down. Um, and the fact that you can sneak by these if you're patient or, you know, slow and quick enough like you can get by these things without having to engage them at all and that was incredibly unique um to me but like that's they're 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 fast they're you know vicious and like they'll <laughs> they'll mess you up if you <laughs> if you um if you don't uh if you don't watch yourself or if you can't take if you can't take them out quick yeah they give you in the game they give you flashbang grenades and then like that'll distract them long enough because for a little bit because because they're based on sound and like bang you know like they can't function so you can get like two or three shotgun rounds off without them reacting directly to you but um once that's up if you haven't killed <laughs> killed them by then it's like run mother yeah so like in last of us there's a there's a zombie or an infected type called the clicker okay and it's not as animated as a licker they just walk around. They walk kind of slowly, and every now and again, they 
they they do what I call the venom pose where they put their arms out and they they're just like hunched over trying mm-hmm. to uh and they they make this clicking noise as if they're trying to see if there's anything around that they can attack. Yeah. And so the fungus this fungus has now grown out of their eyes so they can't see. They do have a mouth though. Okay. And so they 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 just that's how they communicate with these clicks. And so that part is, and that's one enemy type. There are also stalkers. There are uh, an enemy st- type that starts with an SH. I don't remember what it is, but there are different, there are more varied types of, of zombies. Similarly, there are also now different human factions, and some of them you can pit against, like there are scenarios where you go in and there's humans and infected at the same time, and you could just throw a little bottle of glass yeah a, gl- a bottle of glass a glass bottle <laughs> over or, to the wall or both you know or, it can be a, a bottle full of glass yeah you know broken glass and, stuff. and whatever and you it's, just do something that makes noise in the direction of where the humans are uh-huh. and you start like it actually it almost reminded me of watching alien like <laughs> all of a sudden there's this whole host of of infected running in the direction of the sound and you hear the screaming from the the human faction like yo what the shoot it yeah and it's in the dark so it there's this tension that builds up and it's a you know this moment of oh my god what's what's popping so all of those things and i don't want this episode to turn into like a a full review of the game because like i said admittedly i have not finished the game but i have enjoyed the the gameplay that i have had so am I going to say, and, and this is where like every time I get on a, in a conversation online, people exist in a world of black and white, one and zero. Is this the greatest game I've ever played? I, you know, we, we, we both started this episode by talking about like Breath of the Wild, Red Dead Redemption 2. Those are games that are like up there on the list, right? Yeah. Uh, you could say Witcher 3, Skyrim. Those are games that are up there on the list. This game is a, is a decent game. Yeah. And so, and there's, there's, I've had some games over here that I was kind of impressed by, but like, they're not going to be the end all be all games. Um, Resident Evil seven was extremely good, Mm -hmm. but like, would it be game of the year, game of the decade kind of, nah, not really. Like it was, it was good and it was fun and it was well, well done. But like, yeah. Um, there was a game I played called Vampire or Vampire. Or yeah, whatever. I remember when you, when you were playing that one. And it was, I was incredibly impressed by it because it was a decent <laughs> vampire themed game that like allowed for like use of powers and blood and it was probably the best vampire game i had played since vampire the masquerade bloodlines which that's getting a sequel which i'm excited for but like it was it was incredibly unique and i enjoyed playing that game um it had a couple of bugs in it um one of the things that was weird was like it told you how to change targeting for me but it was like you click the center mouse button and then you move, you you know, you do the side scroll kind of a thing or whatever, and it's supposed to switch targets, but it didn't. So I had to like click to untarget and then target again or whatever. But I found a way around it, but like yeah. it wasn't working the way it's supposed to. Um, but like the story was good. The uh, mechanics were good. Like, you know, there was a lot of like, really good value to it, but would it be like a game of the year kind of a thing? No, like it was, it was fun and it was really well done. And I was hoping they'll get a sequel. I don't think they will, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a really good game. And there's plenty of those that are good out there that deserve to be purchased and played and enjoyed. But like, you know, they're probably not going to go on anybody's, you know, greatest of all time, reminiscing about it in like ten, fifteen years. You know, like they're probably not going to be at that level. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, and then this seems like it, if if it's at least in that category or better, you know, like, you know, someone will probably, re- especially if this continues on and we get a three or a four Last of Us, you know, this will be a remembered. That's actually a pretty good point if we get a, if we get a three. And the reason I say that is like why I, I want to know why it is that people hate on this game. And the the simple the, like if I was to oversimplify it, I could and when I first started playing the game, I'm like, oh, so they must be homophobes. <laughs> I, well, that and, was the, the, before the game even came out is the stuff I was getting was that 
oh, it's just a dating simulator or something. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like a game yeah. at all. Like no. it's and it's just like, oh, it's just a, a lesbian, you know, simulator of like what a lesbian would do and what I'm like that I'm like, that doesn't sound like a zombie <laughs> zombie <laughs> game in any way. And when when you started playing, one of my questions was is like how predominant is that that people were losing their mind off of? And I'm gonna tell you this: there are it's like any other game. There's especially like in that type of genre where where you have uh, like uh, like cutscene games. Uh, let's say like think Metal Gear Solid Four, where it's like play this little bit, and then we're gonna give you this much cutscene. Yeah. Now Metal Gear Solid Four is almost like taking it to the extreme but if you well i remember metal gear solid 3 which is where i stopped yeah was like in the beginning there's it's like 15 minutes of cutscene. then you get like you know an hour and a half of gameplay then there's like 15 minutes another 15 minutes but once you got towards the end you were like yeah. am i am, uh, did i stop playing a game and <laughs> put, put in a movie what what, <laughs> like, what happened we're at we're at minute 31 of a cutscene. <laughs> And I'm and, like, where is this going? Like, and so, like, I'd like to play again. <laughs> Naughty Dog does that with their games. So if you're used to that, that's what you're gonna get. Like, if if you go to them, that's what you're gonna get. It's almost like like uh, the uh, is it Quantic Dreams? Who's it? the company that does uh, Detroit Become Human and Beyond Two Souls? Like, oh yeah, it's it's those games are almost like a walking simulator. So if you go to that type of game and you go. But there's all I'm doing is pressing buttons to decide stuff. That's the type of game that, it is. Yeah, exactly. So that's what they make. Like, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. But this, and, and that's why I like get like a general like preview of how, like the first 15 minutes of a game. Uh -huh. You're not necessarily going to ruin anything. But like, hey, <laughs> this is how the game runs, you know, or yeah. like a little snippet. Because we had that issue with Jedi Fallen Order. When they had the first gameplay demo, and oh. we were like, "And we were like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> what have you done?" <laughs> but by the second or third one, we were like, "Oh, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm pre-ordering this. Yes. I, yeah, exactly. I, I gotta play this shit." Yeah. But in in The Last of Us Two, there is a relationship between two females in the game, mm -hmm. and sometimes while you're fighting, they're like, "Oh, hey, thanks, babe." That's what you get. Yeah. Or you might see, um, you might see something along the lines of, like I don't know, it's very subtle. Like there's certain clues to the one of them has a physical condition, and there are clues to it in like you really have to be looking though. Like it's 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 an idle animation that happens, and most of the cutscenes that you see, a a good chunk of them are flashbacks, so they go into the story of Joel and Ellie and where how their um, yeah how their story kind of got to where it is today. Yeah, well, because you're I think you're jumping ahead in time like a year or so or something, right? It's five, five years. Oh, so yeah, she, so they, she went from being like what fourteen to like twenty. Yeah, give her nineteen or, or 20, like in that, twenty in that in that range, and so. So in she's, the cutscenes, so, so she's a fully formed adult who's able to make her own decisions. Absolutely and right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And and so in the in the game, when you get to a cutscene where the two of them, they, there is a there is a part where they're like, "How come you didn't tell me something?" Yeah. And there's a moment of tension, but it's not like they stop for an hour to talk about it. They touch on it and they go, "Well, all right. Well, I have to find us a, a way out of here." Because we can't stay here. So then you go to the next gameplay thing. So at no point are you like, oh, we're going on a date now. No, it's, <laughs> oh, something happened. Hey, I like you, but there's zombies at the door. So I got to I gotta kind of stop this conversation and restock on my stuff so I can handle this problem. Yeah. And so that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, there are other characters that that interact with these two and there's people that they make their opinions known and they uh try to help you out and there's people that you meet along the way that are either stopping you or continuing but it's all gameplay related it's not like i would say like in grand theft auto 4 there were full gameplay sections where you would be on a mission and your phone would ring and you had to stop to go bowling with somebody <laughs> that i would say okay that's more of a dating simulator yeah then in this game <laughs> the gameplay in this game is 100 uh -huh. like related to 
let's do stuff with zombies. There are some flashback sections where, like, there's one specific flashback section where J- uh, Ellie and Joel go to a museum, right? And you're just looking through the museum. Yeah. But because it's The Last of Us, whether something happens or not, there's always the possibility that it might. So you're not just... <laughs> I'm in a museum now. You're. You, it's still like the whole thing is broken down. You still yeah. see signs of well, something well, horrible well, happening. Well, yeah, here. it's like it's like, hey, we're gonna go check out the museum because you know you're young and you've never been to one, and the world's been ending or whatever. But like this museum still has a roof on it. Like you know, let's gear up. You know, sidearm, melee weapon, rifle, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. You know, some snacks for lunch, whatever, and we'll go and we'll talk about stuff in the museum that you know nobody's doing anything with because it's more sort of like you know yeah so who who else is going to be able to like go to a museum that's completely empty with no fee and you can you can go up and touch the exhibit if if you want to because who's going to stop you really yeah so yeah so my i then wonder like is it just that like gamers and I say gamers, but the same thing happens with movies. But we'll we'll focus on gamers. Are we just like programmed to find one little thing and go, "Oh, this thing sucks"? Like, is that what the 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 thing is? Um, I've been bitter about uh, Middle Earth: Shadow of War for a lot. Like, I'm, it's going to take me a long time to get over that. Yeah, the fact that that game was, I mean, it was relegated to bargain bin status on day one because people were like there's loot boxes somewhere in this game i hate loot boxes so this game sucks and it was it wasn't like buy the game don't buy the loot boxes yeah it was boycott anything that that (laughs) that this company ever puts out wb sucks they should be they should be drawn and quartered and put in the stocks outside Mm -hmm. of the their headquarters and (laughs) you know go to go to hell wb yeah and the same thing happened with Battlefront 2. Like, I'm going to say Battlefront 1 was not as good as the Battlefront that came out on PS2. But it was still a really good game for was, the fact it, that... Well, it was also beautiful. Yeah. Like, there's some people that like, put some time and space I'm to, on Endor. Like, this Endor looks like fucking Endor, right? Yeah. So... I can see the reflection of the dead Ewok I just killed in the in Darth, <laughs> in Darth Vader's helmet. Like, I can, Yeah, like, it, was, it was one... And the same thing happened with Battlefront 2 to the point that... People are still playing that game, and they are still updating it. Like if, if whenever I log into that game, it doesn't. The game doesn't say to me like, "Hey, uh, pay me ten bucks for this expansion." It just goes, "Hey, there's new stuff happening. Yeah, go for it." So the fact that there were loot boxes in that game, it was a problem. Mm-hmm. And yes, let's address it. But they like they wanted to take a. Uh, they wanted to take <laughs> they, the devs of that game. Yeah. Like, I'm surprised. They wanted to hang them by their own entrails. Yeah. No, yeah. I, there was some serious stuff to it. I think, and this is this is my thing. I was like, I'm not a fan of loot boxes either, but I felt that what was happening in Battlefront 2 was going down a very dangerous path. And if something didn't get, ha- didn't get regulated or changed or whatever there... I think things could have gotten a lot worse down the road. Yeah, you know so what? It's, a, a, it's unfortunate that it happened to a Star Wars game, and from what I understand, because I still haven't played it significantly, um, but from what I understand, a pretty good you know Battlefront you know style game or whatever. But it it was going to need to happen somewhere, and I think Star Wars had the biggest platform for people to make the biggest stink about it, yeah. you know, or whatever, so that like things don't get worse. Where it's like, hey, you know, because like I, I know we've talked about, we've had previous episodes where we talked about uh, mobile games and like the stupid amounts of money that you can dump into a mobile game to get a absolutely to get a character for whatever. Like, and, and I reference another Star Wars game there, which was Galaxy of Heroes, where it's like, hey. You want to get a fully upgraded, you know, Count Dooku, um, only seventy nine ninety nine, and I'm like, are you who who is spending that money on a mobile game? Like, who is doing that? That's insanity to me. And yeah, for 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 like, 
I know there's a thought of games as a service, and this is the last I'll leave on this. There's a thought of games as a service, but a game should also be, when you pay for a game, it should be full and complete and whatever. And anything you spend on that extra should have reasonable amounts of value to it so that it's not seen as to be petty or pandering or uh, greedy. Like, there should be a, a reason to pay more on your game as opposed to like look we added a skin to something and don't you want to pay 29.95 for it <laughs> yeah on. um nuance is important that's one of the the biggest things that i continually say to people i'm i'm a big believer in nuance i hate people that think in you know absolutes that it's either all good or all bad and so like some other points that people made about last of us too is the oh the they're telling a story in flashbacks that we wanted to play in the actual game. And I'm like, okay, so you want to get to the story now by Last of Us 5. That's one thing I'll say. <laughs> and then the second thing is there are other games that like Days Gone, which is a game that I've seen pe like I've seen most of the enough of the game to know the finer points of it. I mm -hmm. own it. It's in my backlog. I haven't played it fully. But much of that game is told in flashbacks. Like, there's a part of the game that you experience as you're oh, really? going. Okay. But a good chunk of it is, like, how did we get to this point is told in flashbacks. Okay. And nobody says boo about it, right? <laughs> Same thing with Breath of the Wild. The bulk of the Breath of the Wild story is flashbacks because you come out and you're like, what the... Oh, the almost yeah, the story itself. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, almost it's all, all of it. flashbacks. It's all memories that you unlock by going to a place, and then you're like, oh yeah, this happened. Yeah. And then, oh, I remember now. Yeah, and then and that's all the story is usually, and then like you know, probably a good ten percent is like you go to the place where you were before, and the person that you met at that time says, oh, I remember you. Do you want to go kill the thing now? And that's, and that's basically the wait, what the thing? majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> so so. Is it, I mean, I don't want to say it's hypocrisy, but it kind of is because, again, I feel like people, first off, I feel that people review the game that they think they want to see and not the game that's in front of them. And they do oh, the same thing with, with movies, too. Like That's completely true, yeah. Oh, Last of Us 2 was announced? I would like to play the Joel and Ellie game. And so they didn't get the Joel and Ellie game. They got the Ellie and whoever is the companion at that time plus yeah. whatever else game and they can't like some of the you should look up some of the gameplay that i've seen like the, the, the aggressive and stealth kind of mechanics that people put into effect where they're going from point a to point b it's it's nuts yeah the amount of stuff that you can do and and everybody and plays creative, their encounters differently and if it's creative like that that should be the mark of a good game is like absolutely you, however you want to play this yeah you know yep. you've given you're given this scenario you can go off and do whatever it is that you want to do on how you need to solve it so if a game is really good and has like one bad piece to it you always have to think how much does it just distract and how much of it is your own biases how much of it is like, oh, I really wanted this to happen. We saw it with the Star Wars trilogy. Like people, I wanted this character to do this thing in the um, in the sequel trilogy. So you had your issues with the Star Wars trilogy. As I, as with I the, still with the do. Sequel, with the sequel trilogy. But it didn't, It you, you let those issues be the issue yeah. and not... Well, now the whole thing is ruined for me. It's, <laughs> I can enjoy it, and yeah. I'm going to make my point here. Like, my point right here is, I don't think Luke should have done what, I, what, what he I, did. Yeah, exactly. I don't feel that Luke Skywalker would have acted in this particular fashion. And I'm open for somebody to change my mind. Yeah. Please, change my mind. Give me a reason. And I've come close and I'll tell you, to switching over, but it always comes he, back to, like, he's not the same guy from before. And I know you and I happens, have but. you and I have had multiple discussions about hours, it hours of like time. we we've been on the phone we've been on this show talking about it and we are okay to agree to disagree as long as we know hey it's star wars it's great yeah we, but you th th that one point right there that's the sticking point that's fine uh -huh. but some people will take that and be like well now you then you see videos why uh the last Jedi was an abject failure of storytelling, and I'm like, and I've, and and they say the same thing about uh, the Rise of Skywalker, and they say the same thing about um, Force Awakens, 
they they go through a series of different questions and complaints and whatever else Mm -hmm. and it's like well what are we supposed to do like yeah and and i can even remember like when seven came out like everyone was like this is amazing it's basically a repeat of what happened with one two and three yeah Uh, this is amazing it's the best best star wars ever we love where it's going we love what it's doing we love where it's going and all this and then you know this i don't like that there's a mary sue <laughs> yeah and, Whatever. and i have i have my complaint with that but i also i, I had I, my in general complaint um which then was resolved by somebody in a video saying like look at this point you don't see ray doing anything jedi ish at all then kylo ren tries to invade her mind they connect they are a dyad in the force and she's not using her skill she's using her skill she's obtained from his memories and i'm like that's fucking bro- i i'm on board now i'm like Done. all right let's go got it i needed i just needed like a 10 percent, like, like a little bit a little like, nudge yeah and i'm like okay i got it i'm like all right i can i can deal with it now because- so i think the the ultimate point here is that I, I don't want to see this continue because what's going to happen is you'll have developers that are really good. Naughty Dog, uh, Sucker Punch, like developers that have really like Nintendo, even uh, Platinum Games yeah. that have really good games out there. They're going to get this backlash and the backlash nowadays when you get backlash on a game. Holy shit. Your, your shit is done. Yeah. So like you won't see a last of us three just for everyone that knows we got a thunderstorm going right now so just as a thing (laughs) and just just yeah and that's that's really i think the weather can tell how amped up i am about this (laughs) because here because this is what happens is like it's the old commodore 64 business model is you have all these little little developers or small like small to medium-sized developers getting to the bigger developers who suddenly make a really big budget game or a really good game that doesn't hit targets. And then you have your EAs of the world that go, yummy, let me snatch this shit up. Yeah. And then what happens? Then you then you get Last of Us 3, the mobile game. And instead of, <laughs> if you think you're worried about a fucking story, imagine if you, and, oh, you, you're out of bullets. Instead of going back and redoing an encounter to be uh, a little more... Uh, economical with your use of ammunition you can insert 99 cents for you know 20 more bullets yeah (laughs) fuck 25 (laughs) five bullets you know what it was gonna be 20 but you said some shit about last of us too and we're there's a tax on that shit so five bullets you get five bullets and there's a hundred zombies out there and when you're out of bullets, you can hide and you can will generate bullets at the yeah. at the rate of one bullet per day. Yeah. Or give me another 99 cents and you have five bullets again. Do you want that? If you want that, then yes. Keep saying shit about fucking Last of Us 2. I dare you to say some shit about Ghost of Tsushima when that comes out. All these single player games that are just, here's the game. We're not going to charge you extra we're not going to do the assassin's creed thing and fucking paywall a goddamn whole level <laughs> if you pre-order or order the game at, at fuckgamestop.com or fucking best buy you get this level or that level no we're going to give you the whole game for 60 bucks which is unthinkable and then we're going to give you extras that if you pay an extra 10 bucks it's not like oh well now you get additional like your levels are you know increased or You're going to get a whole wing of the game with extra DLC. No, we're just going to give you some collectible shit. And it's just 10 bucks. That you can't do anything with. You can't. And it it doesn't change. Like, if you pay the 60 bucks, it doesn't change the fucking game. But yeah, please do keep fucking criticizing games that are otherwise complete, like Last of Us 2, because you didn't like one aspect of the story. And you didn't like that the one character didn't do a thing that you thought was different. Mm. Do whole Reddit threads on it. And when we have <laughs> fucking pachinko games instead of all of these, whether it's on rails or open world single player games that are enjoyable. For and hours and for, hours yeah, and that, hours. I'm going to replay Last of Us 2 about, I'm going to be able to replay Last of Us 2 about 50 times and have 50 different outcomes. Same thing with Red Dead. I'm, I'm, I'm Eventually I'm going to start another uh, gameplay of Red Dead 2. 
I haven't even played, like Red Dead Online, I, I barely touched. I just went in there to be like, oh, this is just like Grand Theft Auto Online. Mm -hmm. If you want everything to look like Grand Theft Auto Online, by all means, when yeah. people come out with a fully functioning single player game, trash it. Now, that's not to say that the game is perfect. Last no, of yeah. Us, the whole series has implausible little tropes that happen. That's part of the thing. Well, that's, Uncharted. I mean, that, that's, the whole, part, that's part of a lot of storytelling. Is yeah. Because, you know, you're in a zombie a zombie infected apocalypse where you've got to go through and the regular, you know, abilities of society like getting in a car and going down the highway don't exist anymore. Like you're going to have, you know, story tropes of like because surprisingly enough, that's the way sometimes people act in times of crisis or whatever is like these things happen. And, you know, surprise, surprise, we put it in our game. It, who who gives a shit and mm -hmm. uncharted whatever but doing? yeah like uncharted has the exact same thing it's the it's indiana that, jones tropes though. yeah the 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 very oh there's the thing that we were looking for it's in this ruin that we just happened to come across um oh when, when my best friend from so long betrayed me and yeah well, now he's after it for the money and he you know tried to and throw me off a mountain or when whatever. god of war came out everybody was standing in line to give cory barlog back rubs and <laughs> here you have a game that's on rails so you have a god that just moved a mountain but he can't climb over this bush because the game <laughs> says no i don't care about that i love that fucking game but that's not a, like that little thing is not enough for me to be like well now i hate it yeah you know have some good faith have some fucking common sense and stop fucking doing this shit um Having said that, I think I've said my piece. I've got a couple of other things to to flip out about today. So <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I just really wanted to get that out. And I know we did a lot of build up to that, but I just had to get that shit out. Like, I'm uh, just stop. Stop doing that. Like, if there's something you don't like about a game, just be like, oh, it's a good game. But I wish they hadn't have done this. Send feedback to the dude. Send him an email, whatever, to the company. But don't go like, oh. This is where I've seen videos. This is where Naughty Dog's reputation ends. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, that's uh, and and there's so many times when it, when a good game, if it had a little more time or a little more love, would have done so much better. Uh -huh. And from what you're describing, like it sounds like this game got enough time and love. I know it got delayed twice, once or twice. Yeah, I think it had a, a couple of, like one, it wasn't even like it was like a month here or a week there. Not yeah, anything like crazy. yeah, nothing crazy. But still, like I mean, you know, they're wanting to put in. I I advocate for that. I'm like, please, I will wait longer for a good game than to have a game that shit come out early, mm -hmm. and then me be unhappy with it. Because you know, like if you put in a game and it's done and completed and whatever, it's worth you taking the extra month, six months, whatever, you know, to have it done, which I think is um, what Bloodlines 2 is having an issue with. Like, I, I know there's the whole other shit where stuff went bad. Oh, and mind stuff you, went bad, like, these delays are also in the middle of a fucking pandemic where yeah. everybody's got, like, developing and working from home. Yeah. So and, and they're sending files. That. They're sending files up to their secured server yeah. for other people to look at at their homes and whatever. Like no one's going to the office. Correct. You know. So <laughs> so, so anyway. Um, and that's uh, yeah. I I appreciate a good game. I don't have a PlayStation. Last of Us One came out on PlayStation Three. I have a PlayStation Three. It was the last console like that I bought that wasn't a Nintendo one. Um, I might still pick it up. You know, I looked for it online. It's still like seventy dollars or whatever. But you know, whatever. Yeah, but you know, it's not worth getting a <laughs> seven-year-old game for you know nearly a hundred bucks. So um, I could probably flea market it or something. See if I can find a copy out there. We'll roll through it. Um, but I think that or I round can hang out here and play it. Word. Yeah. Yeah. So. Why not? Um, but that rounds out this episode. Um, definitely uh, subscribe to our podcast. If you have a disagreement with what, anything that we just said on this episode, do not send an email. But if you'd like to send some uh, like wonderful compliments and say, <laughs> hey, you guys are right in everything you say, then send an email to endofaspecies at yahoo.com. Yeah. Uh, I am Jeff. I'm Zeus N. Jeff on Twitter. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook if you know my last name. If you don't, then at some point, 
you, I might tell it to you. Um, mm. I'm here with Adam. I'm Adam, and you can find me on Instagram. It's the only social media I have at Tatooine Hermit. And that's it's more of a personal page, but I'm throwing some stuff in there. I think I might make another one, like like a podcast related one, and then that way I wouldn't have so much issue putting stuff on there that's not like pictures of me and my wife, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, let's 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 uh, look into expanding our social media portfolio here, or like a Twitter. I haven't even thought about a Twitter. Ooh. Like, that's... Now we're talking. Uh, well, see, like, I got rid of Facebook a long time ago, and... <laughs> yeah, I don't forget I Facebook. Don't, I, don't miss, I don't miss it at all, you know? Like, nah. I'm not... But I'm also not a person that's in everybody else's business. You know, do what you gotta do. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting... I hear, I hear enough people's, like, idiotic opinion... <laughs> just in general in my day-to-day -day life so i'm like i don't need a place where they can just throw like basically all that the app or the program does is just throw their idiot opinions on my page and then mm -hmm. i get an email about it as well and i don't need any, i don't need any of that shit yeah it's a it's a so. horrible way to live um <laughs> but <laughs> with all that said yes. we will see you on the next episode and uh yeah that's about all i got you got anything else no, just like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up and all of that stuff. All of that stuff. Yeah. Peace. We're still alive. <laughs>